Hi, my channel mammals. <laughs> I'm never quite sure whether this is the beginning, the middle, or the end of a video. <laughs> so I'm going to say, if you like this video, I hope you'll acknowledge it with the little hands or um, subscribe would be really great. Um, and also to spread the word. <laughs> but besides all that, it's mostly just wonderful to be together. Okay, here's the first stage of making crystallized orange rinds, eating an orange. <laughs> often what I do when I know that I'm going to use the rind, um, which is often, <laughs> I cut around it to make it so that it doesn't just have torn sections because it's a little harder to make a little bit consistent um, <clears throat> orange uh, rind peels, uh, strips. There you go. So it's also an easy way to peel an orange. <laughs> These oranges are, are getting old, which doesn't matter one single bit. Maybe I'll, oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Mm. Also, it's great to make a, a fruit salad or anything. Everybody knows. Mm. All the ways to use an orange. <laughs> okay, here we go. You just flatten it out like this. And you can cut them any width you like. You could cut them really skinny, or you can cut them quarter of an inch or whatever width you like. It sort of depends on how you're intending to use them or your mood. <laughs> I said before, I, I already ate one orange, <laughs> and this orange can just go in here and wait in the ice box or on the counter. If it's winter, you don't need to put them in the ice box to, um, to, to wait until you have enough oranges that it's worth uh, taking the time to boil them. These I didn't cut all the way through to the pith, which is funny. I usually, I don't really care about that. I like the pith, <laughs> but for some reason it didn't cut all the way through, so it's a little um, more delicate, I guess. There you go. Now since we're actually going to boil these, I don't need to add water to preserve them, to get them fresh and uh, alive, so I'm just sticking them in there just to keep them uh, together. And as I, I think I might have mentioned before, you can use tangerines or clementines, or of course, any kind of citrus besides orange citruses. Now, the next thing is um, to boil them. I boil them usually two or three times and then I boil them with sugar. And, and I don't think it's too important how many times you boil them or even if you do, <laughs> but I've just been used to doing it that way. So there we go. Now I had another box from before that I'd been saving and now we're going to put them into the cooker.
add some water to the pot. And we can just let them boil for a while. We don't want the water to all boil away, of course. And then after that, um, you know, come back, do another time, but do other things in between. You can set a timer on your phone or in, in the, a kitchen timer and just be ready for them so that they don't go too long checking on them and so forth. And then the last boiling will be with the sugar. Okay. Time for another bite of orange. Mmm. Mmm. It's the best cooking job in the whole world. Hello, my channel mammals. It's very late and I'm very tired, but I have to um, sugar the orange rinds now because they'll be too dry by morning. We're having sort of a dry, cool, icy winter and they get dried really quickly now. So um, I think you can see I don't have any help and I'm, I'm too, um, too sleepy to set things up, but I leave them up on this rack. Um, I'll, bring the, I'll bring it over here to show. I, I always put them up high so that they won't, um, see it's on another, it's a rack on a rack, <laughs> um, because then they're not in the way uh, when I'm doing other projects. So a lot of the times I use this hanging rack to um, keep things from being in the way. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, I don't even have my um, microphone on. I hope you can hear me okay. So here they all are, but see they're getting, they're actually, I'm afraid they're too dry. But I'm, I just wanted to show you the kind of sugar that I use. Um, I used to just use plain sugar, and I think I might have to do a, some plain sugar on these because it might stick better. Um, but this sugar that I've been using <laughs> is something that I discovered in the, the Russian store that I told you about, or that I will be telling you about, <laughs> whichever video comes out first. Um, it's, a, it's a store that has sugar, just like um, our packaged sugar, but it's in a clear bag. And I, I bought one of the bags because I saw that the sugar sparkled so. And so I brought it home and compared it with our sugar, and our sugar just looks like white dust. But this sugar is just sparkling, and it's tiny sugar, but it's sparkling. And um, so I thought, oh, this is so great, because I used to be able to get um, the larger crystal sugar um, from um, when we used to work over in Asia, because that's a, a natural thing for them to have. But since, and I used to buy big, gobs of it <laughs> um, because I knew that I couldn't get it here and because in, in America they just sell little decorative sugar large crystals for maybe decorating a cupcake or something like that but not for large uses and on my pies I always used it and so forth but since I found this I feel really hopeful that I'll always be able to have some sparkle it's much more sparkly than our sugar look at that that's a pretty good view of it isn't it Oh, it's so beautiful. Well, now the orange rinds are dry and we can pack them up. So just use a, a, a clean jar that's dry inside. So you just want to, um, it could be a jar or a tin, something that seals the moisture out. And but these are nice and dry. You want it as long as you can wait before you pack them. It's great if you can wait a week <laughs> or a few days. And um, I usually put them up in a hanging rack uh, so that they are out of out of the way and but here they are see we're just um, Getting them all tucked in And they're a great little thing to um, Actually at, at this time of year or any time of year aren't they aren't they just beautiful? I don't know if they show as rich and colorful in the video as they are in real life, but And you can just use them anytime as I said, I use them for porridge every morning, um, chopped up in little chunks. And they're just, they're better than raisins, better than anything else you can put on your porridge. <laughs> and then um, I often sprinkle them um, 
around any kind of a, a cake or a dessert or a pudding. And I also, when I pack cookies for people, um, I love to put a few of these little orange rinds there. They're just a nice um, touch to go along with um, anything. And, oh, you know, I, I, I kind of doubt whether anybody would think of this, but they're amazing in stews and uh, savory things. They're really, oh, they're just so beautiful in that way. So you can also use them that way. And you don't have to make them into uh, crystallized oranges right away. What I do when I eat an orange is I just put some water in a little container. This is just, um, I think, two oranges that I ate. A little water in a container and put them in the icebox or not. <laughs> in the winter, you don't even need to think of that. And then just have them ready when you have enough oranges or enough time to set them to boil. So it's, it's, it's great to have them just ready at hand. And you can't eat a lot of oranges in one day, so <laughs> it's good to eat them and save them. And then it all comes together. Oh, this is so beautiful. Just a few little scraggly bits left. And the other thing to remember is any sugar that's left in the bag after you've shaken them up and sugared them can go right into the sugar jar because everything I use sugar for anyway <laughs> loves to have a little taste of, of orange or lemon. So it, it, it actually is a perfect component to anything you can barely tell. And, and never, nothing goes to waste that way. Uh, there we go. There. See, there we are. One jar done. You can make them all the time. See all this sugar? Just will all just get smooth and pulled together and put back in the sugar jar. If you don't have a measuring scoop like this with a flat space at the bottom, you can also use a bench um, pastry. I think it's called a bench cutter or a cutter for pastry and just sweep it. Sorry. You can sweep it up onto that and right into the sugar bowl. But since I have this, <laughs> it's going to go like this. <laughs> I just thought you might say, oh, I don't have a scoop like that. But you do have something else flat.